In this video, I'm gonna teach you why beyond a shadow of a doubt, why most people can't change their behavior or achieve any of their most significant goals. Almost everybody is using willpower and they're using psychological motivation and they're trying to figure out all the skills that they need to change their behaviors. They're meditating and they're using affirmations or goal posters, all the things that we're being taught. But there's an element that almost everybody is missing. And without this piece, it's impossible to make any long-lasting sustainable change. And if you do make short-term change based on motivation, it won't last. Now what you're about to watch is a small chunk out of a longer training call from one of our paid programs and I know it's gonna help you achieve more of your goals. So one of the big mistakes I think most people are making when trying to change their behavior is trying to change their behavior. So there's so much focus on the tangible, the observable, what we see below the surface, what we can measure. There's so much focus on copycatting really, you know, we copy other people's workout routines or we copy their habits or we copy how their business looks if we're operating a business or we copy their, their meal plans or we copy their morning routines. We're constantly in this search of doing the right thing, which is why we're so susceptible to copying whatever we think is right. And it's right if it worked for somebody else. What that does is it puts us on a constant search for something outside of ourselves. And then even if we find the right answers, they're not the right answers. And what I mean by that is, even if you find the, the diet or you find the ritual that works for somebody else, if you're not exactly like them in every single way possible, then there's a chance it won't work for you. And I think we all intellectually understand that. I don't think anybody would debate that idea because it just makes sense. But the way we operate in our lives, if we take a look at what we value, if we take a look at our habits, if we take a look at what we invest in, if we take a look at our emotional responses and awarenesses to all of this conversation around behavior, what we'll find is that even though we intellectually understand what I just said, we don't really operate that way. We still think that getting the right thing is the way to go. And the reality is there is no right thing. So when we're constantly searching for the rules of behavior, which is really what we're doing, what's the rule to lose weight? What's the rule to make money? What's the rule to build a business? When we're constantly searching for these rules, then we're putting puzzle pieces in, in places that they might not fit. And the other thing that this does is it perpetuates the problem or one of the problems, it perpetuates the story that we're not good enough as we are, therefore we need the right thing to, and, and why would we need the right thing to fix us? That's why we need the right thing. We need the right thing to do better. We need the right thing to be better. We need the right thing to achieve whatever it is that we think we need to achieve in order to make ourselves feel better. And what gets lost in this whole thing is us, what actually works and what actually will work for us, not just for somebody else. So in our constant search of behavior change, we seem to always be looking for the next right thing, the next best thing. My experience as a life coach and a business coach for all these years is that the most important thing in changing our behavior isn't what almost everybody is looking for. It's, it's definitely not the rules, it's not a system, it's not something that's convenient and easy. It's not anything that fits under the, the, the title or the concept of hacks. It's a word that I've grown to hate. And if you look at, especially in the business world, I don't know how much we see this, but there's always these hacks, right? They're, they're life hacks and mindset hacks and nutrition hacks and exercise hacks and all these hacks. And really what that is is a shortcut. That's what it is. So 
we're constantly searching for these shortcuts. And when we find them, we might learn the rules and we might follow them with our willpower for a short period of time, but we usually can't achieve the thing that we're trying to achieve because the recipe is not aligned with who we are or what we really need. Or if we do achieve it, then we can't sustain it. And a lot of times, the things that we do to chase the short-term success, not only does it not work and it's not sustainable, it actually messes up the whole process going forward. So for instance, let's talk about diet and weight loss and nutrition. Most people, I'll use myself as an example. I've never, <laughs> I, I've never followed a diet that worked. If we're going to define work as still working. So I've followed diets with motivation and willpower and cut down my calories and ate stuff that you know I bought that was supplied to me or delivered to me or whatever. But and it and it created short-term results, but I've never kept that momentum, I've never kept all the weight off. And so every single diet puts me back to where I started. And most people have that exact same experience. I heard the other day that most diets actually cause people to gain like 2.5 pounds. If you take a look at the whole lifetime of the diet, and then what will we do? We just look for the next hack. So we go from one program to another program to another program to another program, and we're actually worse off. Now, when it comes to our diets, the things that we do to try to hack our way into the bikini body or lose a bunch of weight before our high school reunion or whatever that timeline, that deadline is that we set for ourselves, what we do to our body's process of nutrition is damaging to it so that when it fails and we pick something else back up, we're actually not starting from where we were before we did the last failing diet we're starting in a worse position because now our body was shifted. It changed a little bit. The way it, it consumed food and held on to food and burned calories was altered when we were on a mass restriction of calories or when we removed a full macro nutrient, like we're eating no carbs. Like our, most of the hack diets that people are literally spending trillions of dollars every single year purchasing most of them aren't good for us. And yet we keep buying them over and over and over and over and over again. And they create these short-term results. They make us think that we're doing something great, but in the reality, the long-term side effects are not worth the short-term temporary goals. So personal development works the same way. If you try to microwave your sec your, your, yourself to success, then the next time you have a goal to try to achieve, your body and your mind and the whole process and the relationship you have to setting goals will be altered because the last time it didn't work or you got there and you couldn't stay there or you cheated to get yourself there. Maybe you, you purchased something or you faked something and you got there and now you have a bunch of shame so that when you lose the thing that you can't hold on to, what you just replaced your goal with is just heavy emotional shame. And now you got to go back into the process and try to set more goals. And your body's like, well, last time we did this, all this, all this did is added five pounds of shame to our life. I don't want to do that again. So we alter our relationship to success, to money, to relationships, if that's an area that you're focusing on. And long term, it actually does us more harm than good. So when we chase the quick fix behavior rules, we are creating such a level of resistance. We're increasing the incline so much and it's never worth the trouble. In my experience, at least, and anybody that I've ever talked to about this particular concept, it's never worth the trouble. It's never worth the damage. But our brains are so focused on short-term satisfaction 
short-term success, short-term fulfillment that will trade in long-term sacrifice for anything that we can enjoy short term. And that's speaking of nutrition, that's one of the reasons why it's so hard for us to turn down the cookies or the cakes or anything that we tell ourselves we really want right now. Our brain goes, no, but we're gonna pay for that tomorrow. Our, 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 uh, our ego says, I don't care, I just want it right now. You know, Our body's just craving it. It's hard to overcome the cravings. We have cravings in personal development and success and goal setting also. We crave recognition, we crave judgment, we crave financial success, we crave acknowledgement, we crave something that causes us to be in the position where we're easily tempted by the shortcuts. So that's pretty much the way that we are operating on this planet. We're constantly just battling all the surface level behaviors with nothing more than willpower. And our willpower will not ever change our foundation. We'll just go from one quick fix to another quick fix to another quick fix to another quick fix. And then all we're doing is just wrestling with all of these surface level behavior changes. At some point in time, it's just going to get exhausting and we're going we're gonna to realize like this just isn't fun and I don't want to do it anymore. That is, I would say, the way most people are experiencing their personal development journey, whether it's business related or, or interpersonal with other people or losing weight or anything at all. We're trying to better ourselves. We're trying to do it in a way that isn't actually foundational. So the most important piece here is not mindset. It's not motivation. It's not morning routines. It's not uh, meditation. It's not any particular habit. It's none of those things. Those are all different tools that all work for certain people. What most people are forgetting is the most important thing, which is the individual people, the individual person, you. If we don't take that into account, then all we're going to do is just try on a bunch of different outfits that fit other people and you know, somebody might go, hey, you want to know how to feel sexy? Wear this red outfit. You put the red outfit on, doesn't fit right, or you're allergic to the fabric, but it worked for them. And then you get frustrated. Oh, I just can't ever feel sexy. That, that's basically what we're doing, regardless of whatever the goal is. So what most of us are not doing is we are not focusing on the behavior, us who's doing the behaving. We're focusing on the behavior. And the tricky part here is, as I said a moment ago, most of the actions work. They just might not work for you. And each time that you try something that you think will work, you have hope, you have expectations, and it doesn't work, you're more susceptible to just jump to the next quick fix thing which causes us to, to continue moving away from the most important thing, which is yourself. Now, we don't like looking at ourselves. We don't like our reflection, whether it's our physical reflection or just our mental reflection. Most of us don't like looking at ourselves because that's where the pain is. But if you don't look at yourself to avoid the pain, then you'll also never touch where the joy is. Because this is where all of our human emotions are. And what most of us are trained to do is look away from the, the negative stuff. And in doing that, we also look away from the positive stuff, but also the solutions to the very problems that we'll never find while we're looking away. And we're trying to solve that problem, which is causing us to want to look away with a solution that includes looking away. That doesn't make any sense. We'll never actually get anywhere unless and until we put ourselves under the microscope and we focus on us. Now you know why the individual must be at the center of any transformation. Take a look at that video where I helped a woman dissolve a deep, deep fear in about 20 minutes. I'm afraid of losing him. If something happened to him, I don't know how I would get through it.